Hey gang, my name is John. Welcome to AVT. Today we're going to be setting up your cameras. Okay, we have an ENG style camera that we're going to set up. And we're also going to set up comms so each position can hear each other as we go through this. So starting with the camera. The camera includes many parts. We have a dolly at the bottom. We have a tripod at the top here. And then underneath, of course, is the camera box. So to get a firm foundation, we need to set up the dolly. This is helpful if you turn it upside down. One, be very careful that you don't get your fingers in between because it'll smack like that. So we turn it upside down and we tighten these legs down. Now there's only two out of the three need to be tightened. The middle one is steadfast. Once it's tightened, just lift on here and put it to the side. That way we have room to articulate the other arm. So we're going to loosen this one up just a bit. So it sits right in there. There we go. And there's no such thing as over tightening. And again, what I do is just lift it up and move it there. So it's a little bit easier for when we take it apart. Double check that it is secure. Okay, everything is. Sometimes it gets sloppy in the middle. So we want to double check that. I'm going to lock just one of the sides here. So it holds tight and maybe I'll do two and there's locks on the wheels. Okay. And now we're going to get the tripod. Before we get the tripod, we're going to make sure that these flaps on the ends of each arm of the dolly are facing outward because the tripod's going to live inside of these little beads here. Here is my tripod, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to fit that little foot there into this bead. Set the rest down, and pull this to lock it in. Now if you look at the rest of my tripod, it looks great. Of course not. We need to extend the legs by using these extenders. You can see on this one there's a gray button and what that gray button does is allows us to extend it out. So I need to do that with all three legs until I can get it in like that. Once I have it locked down, let me just double check this one if I'm in and we lock it down, we're good to go. Now, very rarely would you shoot somebody at this height. So we're going to open up the legs and pick this up to be like that. We just lock it off, have a teammate help you if need be, and we could pull these back down just like that. Okay? This is a reasonable height because keep in mind our camera is going to be about so tall on top of it. moving to the camera. The camera has a lot of accessories with it. So first we're going to take the camera itself out. Okay. This is an ENG style camera. It is used for electronic news gathering. Okay. This camera requires a base plate to go on to the tripod. So when we do this, we simply slide with the arrow facing forward. Back here is where the arms go. And we slide this forward until it locks into place. Then if we look on this side, there's another lock here that we're going to tighten. So this guy does not slide. You'll also notice that I kind of put a flush to the back. Okay, that is because if you look at the weight of the camera, most of it's going to be in the back. Okay. 
and we're going to go and we're going to wait for a very audible click. Okay. That means that that camera is secure. This back part here is where the fiber comes in to connect the fiber to the CCU. So that's an umbilical cord essentially that runs all this data and AV through the CCU to the camera. Well, we have other gadgetry we need to put on here. First, we'll put the viewfinder on. And the viewfinder sets right up on this backpack here. And we tighten it down. Okay. And we tighten it clockwise in order to get that down. And then we bring this up to the front where you'll see a little VF for viewfinder. And we're going to go in and plug this in. Okay. Now it's very, very important to, as you're plugging things into the camera, not to twist or not to shove, just let it slide in. Because if it doesn't fit, you could bend the pins. Next thing we're going to go up to this little hidden pocket in the top here. We'll get out some of our controls. We have our zoom control and our focus control. I'm going to start with our focus control, our zoom control, excuse me. I'm going to start with putting the arms on the tripod. Can't forget that. So we know the arms go in the back here, and it doesn't matter which arm you take, they both work. And just make sure you get the threading right. Okay, now I like to make sure that my arms are kind of positioned where it's going to be comfortable for me to run this thing. Some people put them like up here and I'm just like, I can't run that. So I want the arms to come down a little bit, tilt out, and then I have a comfortable camera to run. Now we'll go back to the zoom controls. And the zoom control can be kind of tricky. You try to keep both things parallel at once. So if one lets go and the zoom comes off, that's not a problem. We just want to make sure that we can get this locked in here. Okay. And then we can take the top and fit this in. This takes practice. A lot of people struggle with this, but you got to keep these two things parallel to each other. Now we follow this cable up and it's going to go right under here. The little groove faces outward and you snug it in. This is going to give us zoom control, your speed, a VTR button, which is an antiquated term for record. But if we look underneath, there's also this button here, this little trigger button. And this trigger button is going to actually change whatever is being sent to you. It's a return in your viewfinder. So say you're in preview and you want to see what's in program, you can click this button and see what's in program. Just like that. So a lot of times it's good. You're looking. You want to make sure you don't have the same shot coming up. And so you would hit that. Next, 
we're going to put on our focus controls. Very similar to the um, zoom controls, a little bit easier. I prefer mine outward. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's in or out. Okay, now we have this guy, and this guy is mechanical. So as I move the bottom of the tip with my finger, you can see the tip of this is moving. And it goes right up under here in this accessory. And I hit it, and we're moving. Now you have to be very careful with this threading because it is very thin. And we got it. And then same back here. Kind of move this until it fits in. And I'm not quite in. I can tell I'm not in. So what I want to do is loosen my threads up a little bit, maybe all the way, and see that I'm pushed up against it. I go down. I just re-threaded it, and now I'm pulling focus. Okay. So some parts of this camera that are really important to know are the lens, of course. This we have a push-pull automatic. Automatic uh, is in, manual is out. We have an auto and manual focus here. We have a macro focus. For the most part, that should be off. And then push button there. Okay. Now we do have audio settings back here as we have rear inputs, channels one and two, and they can be line or mic with phantom power. And we have, of course, a mic in the front. I don't have that installed right now, but it would go up front here. Okay. And then we have, there's a little cartridge that can actually be installed right up here for a lavalier system. If you're using this on the go, you can have that as a lavalier, and it works really nicely. As I mentioned, we have the backpack. This converts everything into a studio camera. If I don't have this on, I don't have the ability to be a studio camera. So this is going to control to uh, connect to the um, CCU. And then all the information taken from the camera and all the information taken from the CCU will go into this, be deciphered, and go into here. If I am taking this on the go, I would have a um, viewfinder up front here that allowed me to look in like an eyepiece. And I'd have my controls and stuff on the side. Okay. There are two on and off switches in the studio mode. First one is under this little highly engineered door to turn it on. Next one is down here in the front to turn it on. Okay. Right now you obviously don't see the camera turning on because it is not hooked up to the CCU. And so we will be doing that in a later video. Okay. Now in later videos and lectures, I will be talking about the difference between four wire and two wire comms. Technically in a studio setting, you would have a four wire comm system, which is also known as a matrix comm, that would be able to plug your comms right into here and listen that way. However, we do not have that ability. Because we are a mobile studio, we have two wire comms. So we're going to go ahead and start hooking up belt packs for each of our cameras. Okay? We have two cameras. We're going to hook up a belt pack for the video engineer, who does the shading of the cameras, which is kind of the quality control, and the switcher, which will be the technical director slash director. 
and we'll go about doing that. So let me just move this guy out to our little production area. And the camera I just built is camera two. We already had camera one built. Okay, it always goes left to right of what the director sees on the multi-viewer. Now that we set up the cameras, okay, we need to add comms to each position. So this is the back of the comms rack here. Very first thing I want to do is take the power and plug it in somewhere. Well, down here on the audio rack, which we will get to later, there's a courtesy outlet. So it's okay to plug comms in right there. Okay. And if we could get a look at these guys here, these are your comms outputs. PS20 stands for power supply. And we have one, two, three, and four. Okay. Here is program PS20 program in which is actually used to take a feed, a monitor feed, from, we're going to take it from output 4, and we're going to feed it into there. So if I'm going to just take an XLR off the ground here, and again, in a later video, when we go over audio, you'll see how important this is. Take it from output 4 into PS20 in. Excuse me for one moment, as we have a simple knot here. There we go. Again, that is for audio going into comms. So now, as the director, I hear the what's going on on stage. I get to hear everything in addition to other people. So let's loop out to our different positions. Today, we're going to have four positions. The four positions are going to be camera one, camera two, engineer, and director. So what we can do is take one and run that all the way to camera two, line input one. Now you'll see there's an output as well we can take that output and jump to the next camera. The other thing we need to be concerned about, of course, is comms need headsets. So here I have one of my AVT uh, headsets, and I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, plug it into the four pin. You can count the pins on that. And it's gonna fit in the four pin just like that. So now you'll hear, and you can talk, back and forth. It's important to remember that over a two-wire system, one XLR equals four signals of audio. The button one going out, the button one coming back, the button two going out, and the button two coming back. So that's broken up over two wires within this one XLR. So let's go loop through this one. And sometimes it helps when you are all loaded with the camera to have kind of like um, a loom hanging from you just to organize the cables so you don't trip over them. And we're going to come over here to the second camera. And we're going to go right in, line in, and then we'll take the headset put it in here. It is important for comms. The easiest way comms break is when you take the headset off. So at all times, you need to make sure that you have your headset on. It is functioning. You can hear everyone. That way, there's constant 
synchronous communication going on throughout the whole team. All right, next one what we're going to do, this is a bit of overkill, XLR wise, but why not? We're going to take output two. It doesn't matter which output you take. They're all the same. But we're going to take output two and we're going to run this up over here. to the director. Now some of these are marked. This is just GAF, it comes off. Um, a lot of times each month they'll peel it off and put whoever, whatever position, or just use it like that, it doesn't matter. It does help organize. But we plug that in and that, and without that XLR we have no power, okay? Right now the audio system's not powered up so we really won't get anything, but once that system's up, we'll have, um, We'll have power to these guys. You'll notice this one's a little busted. These get well loved in labs. So we try to be very careful with the gear here. Very careful, but sometimes things like this drop, they open up, um, and it's hard to, to fix that. So please, as you're moving th forward through the program, respect all the gear. That's a really important thing to do. Now we have another option. We could come out of output three and go to the engineer rack for the engineer, or we could just loop out of director and go to engineer. You can have about six comps packs looped out of one another. So I think for today, we're gonna to loop out director and go to engineer. And we just take the output here once again, and bring it up to the input right here. Now this guy is a fully functional one. We just need the headset plugged in, and we have our comms unit. A lot of people think comms are difficult. but the basic wiring of them is extremely easy when you're talking two wire. So on the front of this, our comms are kept in a nice little pouch and the headsets are kept inside here. What I have here is, right here is a main, okay? This is like a rack mounted belt pack, but it sits here. So it's not going anywhere. You can see you have the two talk functions. You would still need to run an output from the back here into the main in order for this to function. Over here we have what is called the PS20 power supply. This is on right now, but you turn that on and you get um, power to everything. So this is what actually powers and communicates that audio to everything. In bigger systems that we'll get into lecture, a two-wire system might, always, might um, have a SAP or a source assigned panel. And that source assigned panel is going to allow you to select what party lines. And uh, we will talk about that in the comms lecture. So for comms, that is all I have for you right now. One of the biggest points beyond building the comms and setting them there was running the program in from the back of the audio rack to the comms port. Okay, that is very important because how else will you hear the act? Okay, thanks for watching this lab. I hope you uh, hope to see you at the next one.